Hello, watch this. Sponges. Sponge. Sponge. Sand. Sponge. Sponge. Almost three stacks of sponge. I had no idea that you could find several, not one, not two, not three, but several amount of sponge rooms in one ocean temple. I don't think I've ever owned this many sponges. Hmm. 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 Ah. Brilliant. <laughs> and an omega, <laughs> omega sponge. <laughs> hmm. 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 Uh-huh. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. Spoop. Aha. Uh -huh. Are you ready for this? Hello. Sponge time. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, uneven door. <laughs> Clearing an ocean monument like this is no small task. I would even argue that it is among one of the more grindy things that you can do in, in Minecraft. Now, of course, there are grindier things like, for example, building an omega tree or clearing a perimeter. But as, as far as one farm thing goes that is not over the top, it's quite grindy. The time lapse that you just watched was a sped up version of seven and a half hours or roughly 45 Minecraft days. And to be honest, that's pretty fast. I don't think I've ever cleared an ocean monument in just seven and a half hours. And what's even weirder is that I managed to somehow profit in the amount, in the amount of sponges I have. I, I found more. I found more sponge rooms inside the temple. And almost three and a half stacks of sponges from one temple. That must be the, it must, must be the spongiest temple I've ever cleared. Now I say cleared and that's not entirely true because, yeah, the entire in, inside of the temple is still filled with water. I will be honest, I thought that this was going to be a very painful task because with less water, that means more fishes, ugly fishes, hello, spawns in this one area, but... It seems pretty, it seems pretty okay, actually. And so what I gotta do next is just go around and quickly sponge every room of the temple. Hopefully I don't, I don't run into too much trouble doing this. I mean, this top room <laughs> was super simple. There are so many fishes around me at the moment that the sounds in Minecraft are broken. Hello, sounds? Hello? There's like, there's like the odd sound every now and again. I can't break my sponge just that I have sound with it. 
Still haven't died, by the way. I still haven't died once while doing this guardian farm. Stop! Stop! Retreat! <laughs> yeah, there's just too many fishes. I have to, I have to big brain them. Step one, more sponges. And this is so satisfying. So very satisfying. Step two, fermented spider eye. And a golden carrot. Step three, potato water. And now we brew. <laughs> well, that's, that's awkward. <laughs> Why are these called awkward potions? Hmm. Ethel still hasn't picked up his medal. Big sad. Aha! Now, while clearing the temple, I used 18 invisibility potions. And I gotta say, they are, they are game changers. And it is a bit scary to take off all of your armor and just disappear. But they have been so extremely helpful. And hopefully, this is the way to do this. Because the more water I remove, the more concentrated, concentrated ugly fishes I get. Well, wish me luck. <laughs> Imagine being one of these fishes. You're getting outplayed by by a, by a pair of boots and a yellow block. <laughs> they're so they're so confused. Sponging nowadays, when you can dry them in the Nether, must be one of the most satisfying things you can do in Minecraft, because you can go absolutely crazy with the sponge placement without. Without feeling too bad about it. And I think we're getting pretty close to having the entire temple water free. So sorry, not sorry, fish <laughs> fishes. I'm pretty sure all of the water is gone. This is a big moment. Very, very big moment. Iskal one. Water zero. <laughs> I'm a man that gets proud by beating water. <laughs> You know what time it is? Bacon time. <laughs> Would have really hoped that the fishes had despawned by now, but apparently, apparently they are persistent. Uh huh. Yes. Big, big yes. Ah? Ah? And now for my Ocean Monument <laughs> reward. Yes, I am so rich. Right around 60 days, 10 hours, it took me to create the sandbox. <laughs> it's quite weird thinking about it, but I've spent 10 hours and I haven't even started with the main with the main thing yet. One could say that I have built a very fancy house, but then again, to be honest, it's it's not very fancy. I do still have quite a bit of sand though, which is absolutely great, because after all of this, it's finally time to start building the guardian farm. And like any good cooking show, we need to get the ingredients first and safely store our reward. Monumental reward. <laughs> Silly! I'm going to want some glass. Light blue. I guess I'll drop off all of this sand. Hmm. 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 I don't think I like the light blue. <laughs> okay, the last few times I've been here, I have been thinking, show off, the man got himself a backup. But then, I opened this chest. Five more <laughs> tridents. Etho is a rich trident boy. I've made my choice. We're gonna go with the deep slate and light blue stained glass. In all honesty, what we're gonna build next is not going to be the focal point of this farm. And I'm talking about two giant, well, nine times 
12 tanks. And I should probably make sure that I am positioning this correctly. It's been a while since I built this, but I'm going to use a design that I invented myself back in Hermitcraft Season 6. And what I want is eight blocks in between the two tanks. So this, <laughs> this would, this would be annoyingly off center. Petition to make deep slate insta mined if using a netherite pickaxe, which I, I don't have yet, but then I would have a reason to get one. That is the center of the farm. And this will be our center because we need a two by two. And with eight blocks between my two tanks, this is where the tanks are going to go. And again, they're going to be 9 times 12 in this direction. And that's tank number 1. And this is tank number 2. Now, it's not really that important to place them in the middle of the monument. It's just important that the distance in between is 8 and that the footprint of the tanks are correct. Now we got to make these tanks big. Guardians will spawn in the water all the way up till Y level 61, which is right here, two blocks below the water line. Yeah, these tanks are, these tanks are quite big. That's looking pretty cool, actually. But there's no way I have enough glass or deep slate for this. It's a good thing that I mined out all of the sand for this project. I think my two tanks are pretty much complete in terms of their height. Next, we're gonna need glass panes. And maybe it makes no sense whatsoever what I'm actually doing or why I'm building tanks. It's because I like aquariums. Aquariums are very cool. No, this is where this is where the ugly fishes are going to spawn. They're gonna spawn inside the tanks, which we're gonna fill with water, and then they're gonna fly up through bubble columns, and then we're gonna try and push them to the side into the middle. And the panes, well, it's the best way to stop the fishes from jumping as they get pushed to the side, in my experience. Just a warning, th this may not work at all. It's been a long time since I built this. Next, we have to build like a, a collection thing in the middle and then we want to centralize all the fishes above those two by two, that those four blocks there. Deep, deep slate. First, we're gonna need a sub-tank, TM. <laughs> and the sub-tank is gonna be two blocks out and six blocks up. And we'll fill it with glass. And my house is beginning to be, to be right in the way. And then in the very middle, we're gonna knock out these four blocks. And then we wanna build a sub-sub-tank, TM, right below the other tank. And this is where the fishes will be transported into the 2x2 two two and then into the tube in the middle, which currently doesn't exist. Nice! Next, fence gates. And the fence gates will help us keep the water at base. We'll have four fence gates there stopping the water coming from, coming from the sub-sub tank. We'll do the same here. And it doesn't really matter how you orient these, but that was a bit annoying. And apart from the water, the soul sand, and a ceiling, I think that the first tank and sub-tank and sub-sub-tank is actually complete. Now all I gotta do is the same on the other side. More deep slate tank roof. <laughs> and my house is very much, very much in the way. Done. This is getting very exciting. We're actually getting pretty close to having a functional farm. But one very important thing remains. We need a killing chamber. And that means clearing some more water. Which, to be fair, is not going to be that tricky in this scenario. At the end of the day, it's only a 2x2 two two tube. And I know how to sponge. And we want the fishes to die from the fall. So we're going to need to go down to Y level 19. Or at least I think that's going to be in a good level. And on Y level 19, I'm going to place my hoppers in four different directions. There's going to be a lot of fishes dying here. The hoppers, the hoppers are not going to keep up if they're facing each other in two chests. A double chest for every hopper. And if I've done my calculations correctly, this should kill the fishes automatically. Now I just need to get out of this hole. Oh, 
All right, killing tube of doom complete. Budget elevator complete and budget door complete. <laughs> Actually, doors. <laughs> oh, I've missed something. Something very, very important. The bottom of the sub tank. <laughs> Thank goodness I saw that now. Thought I had a little bit too many spruce fences left. I usually don't question my bad math though. There we go. And now for the final part, the scary part. There's a creeper on my tank. Two creepers on my tanks. No. Hello? I guess we should half slab these. As I was saying, now it's time for the scary part. To fill these tanks with water source blocks. We are gonna need some netherrack, a healthy amount of soul sand. I think we need a little bit more than that. Ooh! Ooh! Final ingredient, kelp. Lots and lots of kelp. <laughs> kelp really is the rubbish of the oceans. <laughs> Look at this! To be fair, I don't actually need this much kelp. I could have just I could just bone meal the kelp I'm gonna plant. Now I haven't died yet building this farm, but this process this process is gonna be very, very scary. We need a layer of dirt on the very bottom of our tanks. And then at the very top, we're gonna want a layer of netherrack, leaving two airspaces in the front of the tank and one airspace in the back of the tank. At least I think this is the correct way to do this. And now for the scary part, water. And this is scary because this is allowing the guardians to spawn once again. That is looking good so far. And then we need another layer of water up top. Hmm. Hmm, this is not looking correct. We want this water to go all the way to the end. And then we can break the netherrack again. Why is it being weird like this? I am very confused. And then... Yes. Yes. Next, we remove all of this netherrack. And this is when it starts to get really scary. We gotta go all the way down. And make everything into source blocks using our kelp. I'm not gonna lie, this would have been so much easier with bone meal. I want some bone meal for this. <laughs> well, this is gonna take a while. <laughs> no, it's gone wrong! Stop, stop, stop. This is absolutely disaster, but it looks like kelp can randomly grow and create water, which I had no idea about. So, I'm going to try a slightly different approach. We need the water to stop where the dirt is. Disaster has struck. This is the only way. Stupid fishes, stupid kelp, stupid everything. Everything is going wrong. This took a lot longer than I thought and I have no idea if this is gonna work out, but the kelp has been placed and so now I have to break the dirt and make sure the kelp doesn't grow at the same time. I, I, I don't know how to do this. Hmm. I guess we break all of the kelp first. Very satisfying and also very laggy. Then we break the dirt. Hmm. Well, the guardians are spawning in, but this is not, this is not how it's supposed to be. We need the water to flow over the panes. I guess the only way to do this is to redo the top layer. I feel like I've done this in a very, very bad order. I'm gonna try and place down water on the second layer. And this looks like it's working. Everything is now water sourced. And then fill this back up. And I completely forgot to fill the sub tanks. We're gonna need water there and there. There, 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 and there. And now for the big test. All of this dirt needs to be replaced with soul sand. And hopefully we got bubble columns in every single spot all the way up to the top. Well, I guess the bubble columns doesn't actually render through glass. But, oh, oh, and get pushed into the sub tank and get pushed into the other tank or to the tube of death. Yes, yes, this is working. They seem to get a little bit stuck. Why are you, hello? Oh, I see. There we go. That's better. 
it's taken me a long time, but I've actually got a working guardian farm. Now all I gotta do is one more tank. And my kelp strategy was absolutely chaos, so I'm going to try a different approach. I'm gonna start with the soul sand, and then I'm gonna try and build myself all the way up. That's one layer. <laughs> this is... This is very, very weird. It's like building a house in a bouncy castle. But I think it's working. Hello. So I, I got some, I got some, I got some good news and some bad news. The good news is I finished the second tank and the method of starting with the soul sand was so much better. The bad news is I lost the footage of me completing it and then showing everything working because, and this is quite ridiculous, I ran out of hard drive space. Yep, the recording files for this episode alone was 660 gigabytes of, <laughs> of recordings, which must be some kind of record. That's a bit of a testimony to the amount of grind that has gone into this farm, but the farm is now fully working. And as you can see, we are getting sushi, we're getting crystals and shards automatically. Now the plan is of course to also make this farm be able to be an XP farm, which would require me to kill the fishes manually. But the good thing is that if we go up a couple of levels, and I think it's only like to here. Nope. Here. Nope. I'm really doing an overkill here. What about here? Yes. Yes. If we go up to this here level, the fishes will be a one hit. So it will be an easy thing to build a switchable floor where we can stand and kill them for XP. Also, Minecraft is telling me to find a tree. When I ran out of hard drive space, all of my Minecraft settings reset. So I've had to I've had to go through all of the settings, all of the sounds, all of the, the, the sensitivity and my controls. And now I guess I guess I have to punch a tree. Oh, and, and auto, auto jump is on as well. Ah, all I needed to do was to place a log and it disappeared. Now this farm is already pretty quick and it is very satisfying seeing the amount of fishes just spawning and flying up and then going down the death tube. But I believe, like, oh, now, now it wants me to craft wood planks for goodness sake. There we go, Minecraft. I believe lighting up caves nearby is going to increase the spawn rates even more. But I gotta say, it's, it's pretty fast considering that there's like seven people online at the moment. I am very, very proud of this here farm. And since we are running short on video time, there's only one more thing I want to do today. Mm-hmm. Etho, I have now got a way to fund your shopping addiction. Go nuts, my friend. I mean, we gotta let him know, right? We base together, we profit together. Now, to be fair, we do have to make a little bit better collection system, and then we have to build ourselves a shop. But we now officially have a fully functioning, super cool Guardian Farm of Doom. But that's gonna do it for today. I really do hope that you have enjoyed this episode. And even though it's just about 20 minutes long, it's taken me days to, to make all of the different scenes and edit it together. Now, if you did enjoy the video, do hit the like button down below, and I will see you in the next episode.